plus the scent fragrances for him and for her. Oh, he's taking me somewhere nice to mine. No, now it's 450 again. So we have to watch uh, another video, I think. To fly around and, and take yes. a crawl over the place was as intended, but the fact that it could also, you know, draw a beat on people and and kill yep. people, it was a bit, it was a bit OP. But uh, we can watch a bit more keynotes, but I think we have watched this one, I have not watched. Kagalia up and running in the newest patch update, and I just decided to go and give her a visit and see what That's she's all about. That's law of the West from really 10th to November. Kind of mission she's going to provide. Okay, so we got that accepted, and we got a ship conveniently located right here for us. <laughs> yes, we've got 35 minutes left on the memory card. I think we should also, watch this uh, keynote. I'm fueling up before I leave. And for those of you who are new to the 3.3 patch, this is how you do it. Just go into your Moby Glass, you choose that little icon that I chose, and you just click on the appropriate things you want. Just click OK. See, if you listen, it gives you a little auditory prompting, letting you know that you're fueling up. Gotta give it a couple seconds. Be a little patient. Keep your eye on the fuel gauge. And we're ready to go. Now, luckily, I know right where I am going to, so let's head to it. And I get to show off some new navigation features as well. Kind of simple. Point and click, man. Point and click. I was kind of hoping our path wasn't so straightforward. Because when you click on your destination, the nav computer will set all the waypoint markers for you, making traveling from anywhere to anywhere a lot easier now. One thing that throws a lot of people off is when you click on something like a specific station that you want to go to, and the nav computer redirects you to a point like Crusader or a moon. And that's because the hierarchy goes planets, moons, and then stations. So before you can get to the station that you're trying to visit, you have to travel to the closest planet first, and then the moon that the station you want to visit is orbiting, and then the station itself. Some people don't like this and just want to be able to go from any spot to another. But if you think about it, this feature sets up a certain kind of pathing that directs you as you travel through a system and allows a certain form of gameplay to emerge. For instance, how would pirates be able to set up interdiction traps if there were no paths for people to be traveling along? And for anybody who didn't know, the PU went live for everybody last night. Hooray! So if you haven't had the chance, check it out, download it, and experience it for yourself. Also, make sure to check out the build notes, because there is a ton of new features to check out, and it lists every one of them for you. There's also been a bunch of new changes that have been done to the roadmap. It's nothing really too surprising if you think about it. But the main two things are that our corp and its moons have been pushed back, as well as the integration of the female models into the game. There's obviously a lot of work that still needs to be done with them, and since the addition of Hurston is being pushed back, it doesn't leave a whole lot of time or resources left over to properly address those two features. But the good news is there's still a ton of stuff left in the 3.4 update. For instance, the mission giver Wallace Klim is still going to be in there. The shipjacker armor is still going in, which I love the look of that. And for locations, the Lorville Business District is still going in, which is awesome. There's like a slew of gameplay stuff, uh, AI improvements. And honestly, for me, one of the biggest things is the ships are still going to be made available at that time. Like the Anvil Hawk is going to be introduced into the game at that point. The touring module for the 600i. The rest of the freelancers, including like the Max, uh, the Dur, and the Miss, are all going in. Miss looks amazing. I love the animations I saw from that ship. And also the Reliant Core improvements are going to be put into the game as well. And of course we have like new weapons that are going to be added in and a lot of the core updates. So, so good times. Lots of updates, lots of improvements. Lots of stuff to look forward to. 
Yeah, they got the frame rate looking really nice. I'm still in the 3.3 PTU. I'm not on the live build right now. And I believe the last thing they've been trying to integrate into the code has been bind culling. And that was causing a lot of crashes. And yes. Got uh, like half an hour. And I have to reboot this computer I have been on for more than two days. Well, we converted, I believe, into a modular um, rest stop in the future, as most stations will be. But it is pretty, isn't it? I mean, even the old assets are beautiful. Um, I don't want people to think that they're constantly redoing everything, because they're not. They're, they're reusing everything like this. They're turning everything into procedural or modular or basically they're using old assets and stuff and building all these tools so they can rapidly build out lots of environments and stations easily that will have their own sort of like variants and, and, and differences um, but yes right let us press f1 to open our mobile glass see the inside of our eyes apparently very briefly um so we're just going to do some very basic mining as i said i don't see any need for a sort of like full guide i'll we'll go to Denmark because it is my favoritest of the planets um, most of the time I fly with locked gimbals, but on mouse and keyboard. Um, now, interesting, because if I'm mining, I won't do that. I will uh, unlock my gimbals um, so that I can more easily move my laser off a rock uh, to be a bit more precise at mining. Now we'll see, now that we're slightly farther away from Port Orsa on this more degraded server, our frame rate goes back up to around 30, uh, but there's still occasional hitching. Um, you'll notice in my last gameplay that I did, that's well, gone up quite a bit now, um, that there was, it was a very clean frame rate of like 40 plus a lot of the time. But the game is very pretty. Now, there are certain places to mine that are better than others, um, and I recommend going it's going to change a lot this the issue and there's no real um, reason to have, like make a, a butt ton of money in mining at the moment um but you want to go really near mountainous areas and um, that's where i found most of my delicious rocks and let's go here go to tamden plain sh aid shelter um, but typically more mountainous areas seem to have more nodes or at least more visible nodes um, and uh, going sort of like uh, quantum traveling to northern outposts like this will save you a lot of time traveling from planets and moons and stuff. Now, at the moment, in 3.2.1, uh, there's only the ability to mine nodes on the ground. There will be asteroid mining. Uh, there almost certainly will also be base mining as well, so you'll be able to build little outposts that will be able to mine and stuff as well. Um, so we are going to go towards that area you'll see on the planet i'm pointing at my screen and you can't see that you'll see that sort of like the way they blended the procedural generated terrain you can see lines of like where they, the grid sections of the procedural generation um but it's only visible at certain levels of detail certain distances once i get closer to some of these lines and these grid sections, they will blend in naturally. It's one of the things that obviously they're, they're iterating on so that it looks perfectly natural all distances. At least good all distances. Oh, come on, come yeah, on. A little bit more down. We'll go to this, towards this mountainous area here. An all right frame right now. The Prospect is the only ship we can mine in at the moment. We will also have the Orion in the future, which is a giant strip miner that won't be able to mine on Moonstone. That is a big asteroid miner. Um, it, is, it is very, very, very good. So that's the benefit of the Prospector. It can do both. Uh, that one on a much smaller scale, I suppose. Maybe you'd want to send one in or just use it to find ore deposits because ships are going to have different types of scanners for different things, prospect. Yes. Switch eight minus left. Tumble around. 
yeah. those, those types of wonderful <laughs> things. Yeah, maybe in one drink you'll have a little bit of courage, you know, like a little <laughs> bit more strength in combat, but too many drinks, you lose your coordination. All right. We've missed the trains both times. So. One. Okay, let's see. Uh, all right, we have a. Uh, we got an invite to go see Clovis Darnley in the reclamation and disposal. So this is the this is the mission that is the one that we're going to show. So. Yes. Let's accept that. And we just need to go to Reclamation Disposal and go. And this is one of the mission givers on Hurston. One of the multiple ones. He obviously had a few drinks. Yeah. <laughs> so over here, we've got Maria of Heart. Um, this goes back to player status and uh, kind of the idea behind Death of the Space Man, where when you die, this is where you'll, or die, this is where you'll come back, and you'll be, respond here. Yeah. And then also when you get injured um, and the med pin takes you back to a certain percentage and then it, it will fade over time and then you'll need to actually get fixed up here, whether it's at a hospital or by the Apollo or Endeavor. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the, the idea is the med pen is a short-term solution that stops bleeding and lets you operate for a little while, but if you don't go and get longer-term fixed up, the bleeding will come back and you'll eventually die. So even with med pens, you still need to go back and get medical yes. help and fix yourself up, just like repairing a, you know, you're like a ship. You repair yourself. Uh, so here we are, reclamation and um, disposal. Yeah, watch uh, this. <clears throat> this is probably going to have a very good scanner for mining. Want to watch uh, a bit more than this? Yeah. It's, uh, whilst it's one of those great things on paper. Uh, the one way thing I will see that alone because they're talking a lot. Yes, 25 minutes left. Uh, even if it's looking for big asteroids. Close now. Hopefully, we'll find some rocks here. And we're not going to worry too much about the composition of the rocks. We'll talk about them. Um, but elements and commodities and all that sort of stuff, they're going to change in value dynamically in the game based on what system you're in. Uh, at the moment, obviously, we've only got a section of Stanton. Daymar is my favourite by far and for the moons. You see that box there that is sort of like. I think it changes my level of detail around my settings so it's like a shadow box or something. I'm sure. Right. Oh. So this is why I fly. Gimbal locked. We found some... So, we found some rocks already. You can see these little blue things. And they are basically... There is a rock here. Uh, but we can press uh, tab and we can hold right click. Or left click actually. I'm not talking about right click. Um, and we can scan for a longer distance. You can see those like cubes over there. That's basically, there's things here. There might be things here. We've detected things. Uh, but we're just gonna go right ahead, press M, go into mining mode. We'll fly down to one of these rocks. Hopefully there is actually a rock here, yes. Oh, 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 I wanna see the world hole. I haven't seen world hole since Minecraft. So we're gonna highlight the rock and it will tell us about the rock. There's a very small percentage of diamond here. Um, you can have a look around at the other rocks as well. Oh, what's, what's over here? Anything nice here? The rocks pop in at the moment. Um, obviously something that's not intended. Let's, let's mine this Kururududum. Kururududum. Now. Let's go over what these stats mean. So we've got instability. That's how angry. Yes, 
Need to roll again. Quickly angry the rock gets. Oh, apologies. The air is especially dreadful today. <laughs> Still alive, I think. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Reclamation and Disposal. My name is Clovis Darnelli. Wonderful to meet you. What can I do for you on this fine day? Well, you gave us an invite about work. Let's ask about that. That's an excellent question. If you're not particularly concerned with shades of morality, I may have a lead on some, well, let's just call it questionable materials in need of forceful collection. The devil's in the details, I believe. Read them well. Okay, there's a uh, satellite that's fallen from orbit and it has a prototype blade in it we want to check out. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Wonderful. Best of luck. Okay. Head out to the crash site. We're going to change the check the mission, I guess. Yeah, okay. So we got it. Oh, we're going to do a com call. All right. We're going to ask one of our friends. Okay. Fingers crossed. Yes. Definitely. Hey, there he is. Hello. Hands a bit weird. No. How's it going? <laughs> Nice, man. Hey, look, I just got this mission. Uh, apparently, I need to go out to some location for some potential salvage. If you want to. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm over the area. I'll definitely join up with you if I see you. Did he, he calibrate, yeah, by the way? You look interested. Definitely. All right, man. I'll catch you out there, yeah? Meet up with you. All right, man. Later. <laughs> All right, dude. Juicies. All right, so we, we, we come, obviously there's still some kinks in the facial stuff like that. Just a little not, bit. I'm not, I'm not sure whether uh, we calibrated correctly. And doesn't Chris have glasses or not? Chris does have glasses. Yeah, so, uh, but that, that is an example of comp calls in RTT with the face over IP, not the best example of, of the quality that you can get out of it, but we have face over IP that's working right now in the 3.3 OCS branch that the Emicadia... They can actually play it, too. And they could, yeah, and you'll also be able to go and check it out in the land room, the Drake uh, land room. Um, okay, so... So that's L19. That is, uh, or yeah, sorry, that is the... That's, that's the house that that's we were at. We're in the, the house. security building. Yeah, behind the security building. And then where's the, like, the worker trades? Uh, we're going to head to Tammany & Sons, which is uh, a shop. We're going to buy some armor. We're going to buy a multi-tool. Well, because we'll need that for the mission. Oh so, no, what happened? They are in uh, low quality. Um, so the, the rock can explode if I do the, the mining wrong, if I put too much power into it for too long. And you see the overcharge sensor at the bottom right there. That basically will tell me, oh no, well, let me show you. Let me, show you. Let, me, let me anger the rock gods. I'm angry the rock gods. Resistance isn't too high, so we should get a result pretty quick. A little bit closer. We're pumping all the energy into the rock. You see the rock energy level is going up, but the laser throttle at 100%. We can mouse wheel up and down to put more energy in. Now, we want to keep it in that green zone. And that, you see the fracturing sensor there, means that we are going to break down that rock if we get that to 100%. But if we go over, then we start to get the overcharge sensor going up. And if that hits 100%, then the rock goes boom. 
We don't want that. That's a bad rock. Um, so we've got the resistance as well, which is basically how high you've got to put your throttle before getting results, sort of. Um, but we can just literally just move our laser off the rock to stop it from exploding and to, to like tweak the energy levels. I'm turning the laser on and off with left the mouse button. We'll literally reset the laser throttle in the moment. Um, but having some like macros and stuff so you can instantly set your laser throttle to certain levels, that's going to be pretty useful. So we're going to put the roll up a little bit and look around. Great, great cool. Yes, some kind of uh, problems. Yes, I'm uploading uh, two uh, different computers, so that's not good. Ahead, that is to the business district that we'll be working towards for a 3 4. Yes. Try seven hundred and uh, seven hundred and twenty. Yeah, don't try to cosplay those little uh, the bags, cheap plastic bags, breathing apparatus. No, something. Uh, I think my internet is because I'm uploading. I'm still uploading. Yes. Things. It could, could may not end well. Yeah. All right. So this is uh, the new. This is the actual new flight suit that's coming with 3.3. .3. It's the RSI. Odyssey, it's uh, very cool. So uh, we're just gonna get it. By the helmet. Okay. Get that. And then. Yes, I need to uh, reboot my computer. Have been uh, on for more than two days. We need to go. Do we have the suit? I don't have the suit. Yeah, we have the okay. suit. We need to go get the multi-tool. So think of the multi-tool like uh, your personal utility item that will have different attachments that you can actually use, whether that be cutting or welding or salvaging. Hopefully mining, I can talk them into mining. Yeah, like, like small scale mining. Yes, very small scale mining. <laughs> All right. At least put the other suit on. There we go. You sure we got the thing? It says under suit empty. Oh. Yeah. Okay then. Hey, you only did buy the helmet, by the way. Just let you know. Did it not let you be able to buy the RSI suit? No, I don't think it gave him the right items. Okay. Yeah. All right. Write that up as a bug. Yes. So just put a little armor on top of the RSI uh, suit. And let's. We'll do the helmet when we fly. Yeah, you don't need that on Hurston, even though the air quality is bad, it is breathable. All right. Okay. So we're going to make our way to the train station. So this is the workers' district, and that's how the workers get taken to the strip mine. 